near enough. We'll get it. We'll get it. I mean, there's, defi- there's definitely a spike to be found. Um, no, it's fine. It's, tell yeah. you what, I, leave all this in, me adjusting myself and working out if this is the right angle for you for the edit. Leave it in. Yeah. I want this. I, it's all being left in, mate. This is behind the scenes. This is raw. Digital rabbit hole raw. Yeah. Um, hi. <laughs> oh, God. It's almost like we've not spent about six hours talking to each other today. How have you been? Yeah, I've been I've been really good. You know what? I thought after I think when we were getting to the end of playing um, the forest, um, I was not I wasn't tired, but I kind of felt my energy levels going a little bit. Yeah. But then afterwards, when I started thinking about what we'd done in the game and what I want to do next time in it, I actually felt myself going, "Oh, I'm actually in a quite a, I'm in quite a pump mood for this." That's a, that's a similar thing for me. I, I sent you on the stream earlier. Um, for those who've not yet, twitch.tv slash drhpod, where we live stream, we play games and play with viewers and all you at home if you want to get involved. Yeah, I said you on the stream, I think we may have talked ourselves to death today. Um, m- maybe we wait. Um, but then we had a five minute breath and it was fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> then I realised, actually, first world problems. Shut up. Get your headset on and get your mic out. Yeah. Cool. Um I want to just deal with some little, tiny little bit of housekeeping based on the Mandalorian episodes. Yeah. Um, not to harp on it, we had two episodes, two, what was it, two and a half hours, something like that? Two hours, two and a half hours of Mandalorian? Like so yeah. I know, I just want to not race through it, but just give some extra little details, stuff that I was made aware of while watching the accompanying documentary series um, for season two of The Mandalorian. So John Luisiama was in it. Yeah. Great actor. Um Love it. He's um he plays the mafia boss in the you know the cage yeah. fighting episode where Mando comes in and yeah but he's all he's all masked up he's all costumed up but yeah pulls out a great performance, um and then I don't know if this is something that was it's it's never mentioned in the documentary but I was watching it and there's a a sound guy a boom mic operator, and he's dressed in his just normal clothes, but he's got a pair of like bright pink shorty shorts on. Um, and the minute I saw it, I was like, "That, that is definitely a reference to when they filmed the original Star Wars, and there was yeah. basically a naked dude except the pink shorty shorts, boom mic operator, and there's a photograph yeah. of it. And I think it, it's been like um, someone's gone as it as Halloween. It's been like, oh, the most obscure Star Wars costume and all this, and they don't mention it. And I kind of I like the idea that it was he just did it on that day, and it was like an on set joke on the day they were filming the documentary. And now I think he's sat on going, oh God, with no point of reference. I just like a really weird guy. Maybe he started as a runner. <laughs> oh God. Anyway, I think it's a nice little <laughs> it's a nice little Easter egg and I'll find both images and I'll pop them up about now. And if you're listening to this and not watching, that means nothing to you. Another digital rabbit hole visual reference. visual visual joke that no one will get. The last little bit was something that we didn't touch on and I wanted to kind of have a look at it before we spoke about it. So in the final episode of season two, you get the, the um, you know, the Mandalorians who take the helmets off who come back into it. And rather than three, we've only got two. The guy's not there. And his name, his character's name is Axe Wolves. I mean, I would have got rid of him just for that name, but, you know, that's, that's just me. <laughs> like a hair metal band. <laughs> Axe Wolves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so apparently the reason and the the, the actors actually tweeted saying that um I, I i don't know what the actual tweet was but essentially saying that there's an in in narrative in story reason why his character's not in the final episode that he's potentially off doing something else and it will become apparent in season three mm. so it's cool so it's not just some dude he's just not there he's you know he's pulling a sick day or whatever um, yeah. But yeah, so it was, book, it was booked that week. Like, oh, I had to write a whole epic story about it now. Like, <laughs> I know that it sounds like it was planned, or maybe at least saying it was. Well, maybe it's just a really ballsy move on the actor's behalf. Going, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock them into doing something with my character next uh-huh. season, and now yeah. they've got no choice. It's like I've got enough of an online presence. I reckon I can force my way back in. <laughs> <laughs> so that, like I promised, it was only going to be a little, a little, a little brief mention. But that's the uh, the Mandalorian sort of housekeeping. Um, based on the last two episodes. Do we count this two episodes? Part one, one episode, part one and two. We're going with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. Yeah? 
So apart from that, how have you been? What have you been up to? <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad. I've I've uh, discovered a new animated series. Oh, tell me more. Um, which is this? This sounds like a terrible elevator pitch for studio executives. Now, for me, it's Adventure Time meets Rick and Morty. So it's called Bravest Warriors. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the UK, it's on Prime Video at the moment. They're not paying us to tell you that, but seek it out. Most people have got Amazon at this point. I mean, if you want to pay um, us to tell people about it, um... <laughs> Amazon hit us up. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! We'll get. We'll enter a dialogue with you. We'll. <laughs> I'll sell people... out right now. I'll sell out right now. <laughs> Honestly. Well, my oh, people will talk to them. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, but Bra- right. Bravis Warriors, yeah, Bra- Bravis Warriors, yeah. So it's uh, it's got a lot of the same writers, I think, and it's got the same art style as Adventure Time. Um, a few of the same voice actors, but it definitely pushes the boundaries of where Adventure Time. It's oh, it's definitely a kid show, but it has sort of you know undertones and little references and subtle things that. Adults you know, will for, for can watch, viewers. yeah, not get yeah. bored while they're watching it with the kids or whatever. This, yeah, this is listed as a seven plus children's cartoon. In the opening scene, the main character's fighting this demon dreadlord and pulls a finger up at him, and I was like, "Oh, okay, right, we're in, we're in." Um, it's just awesome. Just go watch it. Maybe, I won't say anything more. Maybe it's just, it's kids really are just different than when we were kids, <laughs> and just flipping the bird is just. It's so run of the mill now that it's not yeah. even a, it's not even an issue. It's not even controversial. It's not pretty even, standard. Yeah, just how they get it done nowadays. Yeah. No. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. Go watch it. It's really good. Very enjoyable. Um, and I literally just it just came up in the feed. We've we've spoke before yeah. about the different streaming services, and you know some are quite good, and things come up in the feed, and you can navigate them, and then some like the aforementioned, aren't necessarily the best layout on the app. Sometimes things just go missing. Clunky and... There'll be tons of stuff that you'd never even discover. And this just came up because I recently added to my list a few different animated shows and a few different seasons, checking what was on Amazon, manually searching for things. Yeah. And then that obviously just, in the algorithm, got pulled up. Brilliant. Um, so so it worked uh, for you a know, change. <laughs> some of my pet peeves when it comes to the, the, the streaming services is the massive layout differences between... Like on a console, on a smart TV, on your phone, it's like I feel like I'm using a completely different, you know, service here. It's it yeah. really, really quite like difficult, especially if you're not, you know, if you've got a few, like a few different ones going. If you're lucky enough to be in that situation, you can do that. Um, it's definitely a first world problem, but God damn it, I am, I am, <laughs> I'm really re- wrestling with the big issues of the day. Yeah, <laughs> no, these are the big ones. These are these are the big ones. Talking about um, big ones, um, this week's um, sort of source material. What we're we going, what we're we yeah. doing, what we're we going with. Yeah, so we so we tout ourselves as a as a comic book, film, and game podcast, and we've not spoke really about comic books too much just yet. We've done a little bit on the early days over on Switch, yeah, on the live streams, but we thought we both sort of just synced up reading something outside of the big two outside of Marvel and DC and then we thought why not talk about it so yeah um you've you've steamed ahead with saga mhm the saga that is saga this um, this, this 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 massive hefty <laughs> weighty goliath door stop <laughs> well and uh yeah and I, i've i've gone full fat with east of west yeah um, both of which i think we've both if not read a bit of, at least been very much aware of. Oh, since massively! They were out years ago. Yeah. Um, I think I bought you East or West Volume One in the, at some point in the past few years. Yeah. Uh, and I'd I'd read I'd read a lot of East of West already, and I'd read a little bit of Saga, and it was the other way around for you, where I think you'd read more of Saga, mm-hmm. um, and a little bit of East of West. So we thought, look. Let's chat about them. Yeah, I do <laughs> think it's really funny. You know, you've mentioned straight off the bat it's outside the big two, but. I mean, I'm going to throw another name into the mix, um, Jupiter's Legacy. Yeah. And it was funny that I, 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 I've never thought of myself as somebody who follows a particular um, like writer, director, or anything like that. Not that I, I dislike it, but sometimes I, I like to watch things or listen to things or read things or um, it's, it's kind of open minded or as fresh as I can be. And yeah. I just think it's really funny that the last three things that I've read have all been by image. Yeah. yeah. Like, 
for right now, I'm not sure. You know, going forward, everyone's got the ability to mess it up. But right now, I think I just for me, and then I, it's not even like the current um, titles or anything. But for me, it's just exactly what I, I, I need and I, and I want from from comics. Definitely, I think the past few years, um, the big two, Marvel and DC, have. They've gone through a bit of a weird stage where they both did big relaunches. Mm-hmm. Um, New Fifty Two and uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, at this Marvel point, now, it's, probably, it's, it's probably nearly ten years ago, but it still feels like the current run, and that might also be because me and you aren't reading new comics every week, every month, and and so 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 we're a little bit behind where some people will be at. To be fair, but in in a broader sense, there's definitely been. It's almost like we're in a certain age at the moment of comics, where as the MCU got huge, uh, and, and as you know, Warner and DC started looking at we need to replicate that. E- ever since the new Fifty Two on DC side and Marvel now, I think it was yeah, called when they relaunched. So. It, it's th- there's been a certain style to a lot of their books where, in some ways, it's been very uniform and they've tried to really sort of make it very accessible for as many people as possible, and rightly so. You know, not everyone who reads comics. Well, every, every comic is someone's first comic, basically. I think that's yeah. what Stanley used to it's, say. It's, so. the, it's the jumping on point, essentially, isn't it? Like, you know, yeah, exactly. it's like almost they've gone to a point where it's a hard a hard reset, kind of like a mass jumping on point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and I think even since then, they've both had another reset since. Yeah. I think DC in the past couple of years had, the re, I think it was just called Rebirth or something like that, the big universe. But again, it still feels like it's part of that same... Yeah. Arc since that point. And then Marvel, um, in the current run, a lot of things, they're going a little more towards the creator driving the, the tone of, of a series. Mm-hmm. Um, for example, one of the people we're talking about today, Jonathan Hickman, who's currently leading the X Men reboot and Marvel comics, now that they've got the X Men back in the films, obviously there's more focus on let's get the comics going properly again. But it's been down to people like Image. And the smaller studios who've basically said, but, you know, we're going to commit to telling a story. And even if it means for the next two or three years, we're going to struggle to get new readers. We're going to finish out a story. Yeah. And and, and, and so people can buy the trade or people can buy the compendium, the collected edition. And they've got a full story arc, beginning, middle, end. Some of them, it might be it ends and that's it. You know, all the characters are dead or that universe is wrapped up or the cameras just switch off and the world carries on. Yeah. Uh, and, and some of which are a bit more, they leave room for sequels. But what you're saying about Image, they came about because it was all about the artists leading the way Yeah. with the comics when, when they got formed back in the day. And not just in a visual sense, now it feels like basically we're going to give some of the best or at least most exciting up-and-coming writers and artists kind of almost full control, it feels like, on telling a story. And it takes as long as it takes, and as long as it's selling well enough for them to justify it, off you go. Yeah, definitely. And that's what's really great about it. Yeah, I think from from my personally with my my sort of um, love affair with comics is that I had a realization, and maybe this will kill it for some people, but when you know a character and they're and they're a big enough character, even without being immortal, in a way they're kind of all immortal. Yeah, yeah, and it's good and it's bad because obviously if you're if you're completely in love with a character and they're in a, even if you think it's you know it's only got a certain amount of time for the run or whatever, these big characters are, are going to come back or they'll have another story or they'll pop up in someone else's comic and they'll get their own comic again and blah 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 blah. But what I really like about Image is that in the books that I've read, you kind of know who the main characters are, but it's anyone could come in and come out hmm. at, at, at any point. And I love, I love the idea that I, yeah. I can't predict where this is going because every single person is brand new to me in that, in that moment. And that's, what's quite exciting. And I think with, with something like um, Saga, it rightly or wrongly, it got described as like a space opera and it, it really feels like it. it's huge. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And you know you got characters coming in. You don't see certain characters for ages, and then they ro- they roll back around. They've been up to something else, or you know, there's deaths in, in it that you didn't see coming. Some that you hope would would come. And I think it's just for me, it's not about shitting on DC or Marvel. I love DC and Marvel. I love the, the comics. I love the films. I love the the, the small screen um, TV shows as well that are based on those properties. Um, but but right now my tastes are just 
I, I want the unexpected. I want to find. I want to find out something new. Like when I yeah. first discovered yeah. DC and Marvel. Yeah, definitely. And l- l- let's just jump into into more about Saga because the the original plan was to strictly read the first volume of each thing, and then we would only then we would only read the full thing of our own one. So I originally said, right, um, you know, you read as much of Saga as, as you want, and I'll I'll just read the first volume. I ordered the companion that you've got, and then I realised I've actually got the first two volumes in trade. Uh, an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> um, it's what happens when you've worked since you were like thirteen, and you've always just had your own money to buy things. You amass a collection like I've got, and it's uh, yeah. See the Instagram at some point for pictures of me trying to move. I mean, it's pure pure jealousy on my behalf. Like <laughs> I look at it and go, oh, God, I could only imagine to get to to that point. But um, I thought, do you know what? I'll I'll, I'll I'll read the first volume, and actually, I fancy reading a bit of the second volume. I might as well get to know yeah. a little bit more. I, th- I think we originally said, let's maybe try and do some predictions, let's do this and that. It's got to the point where I'm probably about a third into that compendium now, so I've probably read the first two and a half years of it yeah. already. Yeah. Uh, you know, after originally planning to maybe read the first year of it. And and I, th- I think you're right. What I like about it, both titles, really, they're both very sci-fi, but they also have fantasy elements. Yeah, this this is part of my there's, notes. There's, there's this, magic yeah. and there's the, in the best ways that Star Wars is, and we've been talking about Star Wars a lot recently and in recent weeks. It feels very futuristic and very cool, but there's also parts where they go, "No, it's magic." Yeah, and and before putting a little asterisk and little, oh, but is it? It's like, no, no, it's magic. Yeah, it's it's, it's there's no it's, it's not it looks like magic, but it's actually technology. It's like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, it's it, it's it's magic. Should I do a brief overview of Saga? Yeah, go on. Yeah. It it. Right, um I'm gonna get my notes here because I want to make sure that I get the names right for, for people. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't want one of those guys who goes, Oh, it's written by written by somebody. But it's Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples who basically write and 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 um draw and all that sort of malarkey with it. Um brief overview, it's essentially Romeo and Juliet in space. Um Juliet is um Elena or Alana, I'm not sure how you pronounce it however you want to pronounce however you it. Want. However you want. You treat yourself. Yeah, I'll go go crazy with it. So basically, she's from a planet. She's from a winged race. They look human, but they've got wings. And she lives on the planet um, Landfall. And um, they're very much technologically based, um, even despite having the wings. They're not. They're not. Ma- they're not really a magical. Um, they they know it magic exists, but it's not part of their. Um, they're, they're the science and and capitalism yeah. culture and technology and. Yeah. And then there's their their moon, um, which is uh, Wreath, and that's where Marco comes from. And they are humanoid again, except they all have horns of different types. Some are, I think there's a unicorn one who comes into it later on, but it's like ram um, and deer and stuff like that. And they've had a, an ongoing war um, for forever. The idea being that they could never actually completely destroy each other because they are um, locked um, in in orbit of each other. So if you destroyed the moon, it'd mess the planet up, and if the planet was destroyed, the moon would spin yeah. out. Yeah. So they're they're tied to each other. And at some point in their in their history, the war between them moved off world and off moon. And now everybody in the solar system is essentially caught up in this war, forced to take sides. So basically, the whole planet, the, the whole solar system, is a constant war. And the places that are most peaceful, ironically, are now the planet. And the moon. And the moon. Yeah. Um, Alana um, is a guard, at one of the like supermax prisons. Marco is a is an inmate. They spark up a conversation. She really doesn't like him. She's dealt with years of um, institutionalized racism. It's on both on both sides, and both sides think each other are, are complete and utter monsters. They start um, spark up a conversation um, around a, a romance novel. I think it is. Yeah, like a really cheesy, pulpy, like you know, trash <laughs> mm. romance novel. Novel. Trash. Um, yeah, and it's it's hinted at that Marco does it to try and get her on side, um, his captor on side, but um, they they eventually fall for each other, and then they make an escape when an opportunity basically arises, and they they yeah. make their escape. Marco's race is the ones that are, that are magical. Um, so they have healing spells and stuff that they can do. And there's a lot of, um, 
what's it where equivalent exchange so you can't just make magic out of nowhere it doesn't ex- it, it's not like a part of you you'd have to yeah. know the ingredients and the spell to cast um, and then there's only certain magic that it, it works on their race so they can't just bring other races back to life and there's there's like very hard and fast yeah. rules yeah. with it which it doesn't really labor on it only you only find out of the rules when it's necessary for the for the story yeah. whether they're making that up on the fly the writers or not or whether or not they know um, what it is anyway I, 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 I suspect the latter because there's a whole language system isn't there and it, yeah. it's so good it's, yeah. yeah oh yeah yeah. actually that's a really good point the language that they've all got different languages because they're all from they're all different races but they have like a translator necklace and a translator ring and when they move too far away from each other it stops working so suddenly you won't be able to under, as, a, as a reader you suddenly won't be able to understand a character um, who's now speaking well they always to them they've always been speaking another language um yeah and Alana gets pregnant this is like this isn't the first issue so this isn't even really this is no spoiler spoiling anything here really <laughs> this is so much more than i'm gonna say <laughs> um, no go on though it's good and it's good. i mean they um it, uh, you suspect that it's possibly the only time that the races have been able to reproduce between them um, or at least it's been expunged from history and all this. So you've basically got both sides of the war now who know about this pregnancy gunning for them. But furthermore, it's not just these two sides because everyone in the whole universe is involved in this war. So you essentially got the whole universe gunning after them. Yeah. And then you have these freelancers who are essentially mercenaries, but they act in that world more like actors. So they have agents that book gigs for them. And it's very... It's they have very, stage names. Yeah, is, yeah, they do. Great, like yeah. The Will... Um, yeah the stalk the stalk yeah and <laughs> even later on you get the the brand i think it is she oh, she right comes there, into yeah. it yeah nice. okay. um yeah and then there's they go to a massive like um like sex club in space and it's all just everything you could think of gets brought into this it's yeah yeah it's it's not one for kids we'll throw that out we should have started with that these are both comics um that are wrote for mature readers. I mean, you know, if, if if you're a child, if you're younger than it's meant to be aimed at, and you want to read it, you'll find a way. That's yeah, what I yeah, did, yeah. you did, we all, we all did. But 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 it's definitely more adult themes, and there's a lot of comedy laced in there, and there's so many um, like themes and so many metaphors, and so straight away you mentioned uh, one race is all about science technology. The the, the the I mean, it's not even subtle. They mention almost capitalism and money and economy and that's what it's all about and they believe in totally free market and strength winning and then you've got the you know the race on the moon where it's all about nature and earth and giving back and you mentioned about the equivalent exchange of the magic i love that as well because there's certain things where you've got to sacrifice a a physical item or sometimes you've got to sort of tell a secret or give oh yeah 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 yeah. something that's strong enough to give a strong spell of it's just loads of little things like that where you're like, it's just great. It just works. It all works. It, you know, part part of me was actually worried that you weren't going to like it. Oh no! Yeah, this is right up my street. Is yeah. it? Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. maybe it's, because... it's like it's like Lord of the Rings with spaceships. Yeah. It's like I'm in. <laughs> if if I'm honest, I, I struggle to know whether or not how much I would have fought to carry on reading it if I didn't have the whole compendium, and that doesn't mean that I'm only reading it now because I got the whole compendium. I'm far enough in now that I love it. And I, if I didn't have the yeah, compendium, yeah, I would yeah. carry on buying it now. But I don't know that the, the sexual side of it was, it, it's it's like, it's not even hinted at. It's like full, full frontal. Like it's, it's full on. And sometimes for me, it, it, it it's more overpowering than anything else that's going on in, in certain, in certain parts of it. Yeah. You can take you out of it a little bit sometimes, can't you? Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think when, when you get into the rhythm of the writing it's actually it's that it, it it does make sense and there's also something that i've not mentioned the the, the girl the, the the child the baby that is that is in at the beginning right at the beginning it's made explicitly clear that she is now older and she's telling it as a story so yeah. you get her narration essentially coming in um and i mean i really love the way the writing's like laid out um, like when the ghosts come into it, they've got their writing in red, and certain races 
alien races will always have their writing in blue and and stuff and it's i do i really really like that or i mean it, yeah. some people might think it's a bit signposty but for me it kind of i don't know, it just kind of, it just kind of really worked it, yeah it does it, it it's it's a it's a really stylistic choice which is why i like it again even though it i mean um brian k vaughan especially in the comics community is a well-known writer um very well respected really intelligent really good story but even the way he writes it lends it to image is about image it was started for artists and it's all about the visual yeah on the page how, how it reads and it lends itself perfectly to it there's loads of things like that well print it's, prince robot how it's all in like yeah. it's all like almost 80s digital writing how yeah. it comes in yeah, um, I, I, I love the design of the of the robots as well. The royal, because like, they're they're the royal family of their whole, yeah, of of their whole world and their whole race and whatever's going on. And I like that they have almost TV screens for heads. And in times of serious emotion or lack of control, images will flash up, which will either show what they're really thinking or it will be an image to represent how they feel. Yeah, uh, there's there's just loads of really stylistic choices where you think we spoke about this many times it's just world building it's just oh yeah it's, it's law for that world and for that story without having to go um exposition dump so there was this whole race of these people and once upon a time and blah blah it's kind of you know yeah. it, it, it does all that there's a couple of like really subtle things that they do and um like you imagine like a, you see it in films and tv shows quite a lot when like a character's talking in their sleep but yeah. the prince shows his dreams on his screen face and the kids are watching it and and i just thought it was a really nice way of like showing what he was actually actually thinking there's one there's another scene actually where one of the the um the robots tv screen people has to take a drink and they're around the humanoid people watching him and then something happens and they don't see it they don't see the yeah. robot take a drink and then the two people turn to each other and go oh god i was really looking forward to seeing how those freaks drink and as an audience member <laughs> or as a, as a reader, you're like, oh yeah, how would they drink? They haven't got mouths or anything. Yeah, like, and, yeah. but, you, but you never know and it, it moves on. And I kind of feel like it's almost like a nod to the audience. Like, oh, you thought you were going to? No, no, we're not showing you. Yeah. So, something I like as well is, is it's not afraid to, at the end of an issue, something will happen. And then through the narration and through what happens next, it basically jumps around in time. Yeah. So, so you'll actually go back to see the perspective of one of the other characters. This could be two or three issues ago, and now we see almost a whole issue's worth of of what's going to happen summarized in a couple in, in a few panels. And yeah, um, yeah, there's just loads to it. This is something I say a lot at the moment about um, about comics, sort of modern ones, and and I've, I've been thinking about it a lot recently because I think it's the wrong way to think about it. So I keep saying things like that. Oh, it's cinematic. You know the way the way it's wrote, the way it's structured. It's really cinematic. It's you're reading it, and in your head, it almost becomes a film. Yeah. But actually, I actually think it's just I think it's just writing done correctly because the yeah, way yeah. you read a not you know a, a novel a, a good novel isn't always just the opening, the middle, and the end. Um, and and I've heard a lot. I think it's something I've kind of picked up through just watching podcasts and reviews and and reading stuff. And it's like oh, it's it's like the best films and it's like, no, no, it's, it's like the best comic books. It's well, like that's, yeah, books. that's, that's what, yeah. when you started talking about, that's exactly what I was thinking. It's like, no, oh God, you're so, yeah. you're so right. We shouldn't be saying like, oh, that, that particular, that particular section, that scene in that comic was, it was, it was almost like, like, be, like watching a film. It's like, oh, so f being a film is like the, the top, the top tier, is yeah. it? And comics are down here and this comic managed, managed to get up to that. It's like, no, no, it's yeah. just storytelling. It was just a great, it's just a yeah, great exactly. part of storytelling. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I think I I really like it as as a as as a comic as a, as a story, and I think it. I understand now why, when it's on someone's list, it's it they're all it's always so high up, and it's so like well respected and 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 loved yeah. by people. Um, well, yeah, yeah, because because but both of these titles as well, we started off saying it's it's not the big two as though we've picked like really niche picks, and we've not the in in the in the circles of comic book readers, these are both very popular titles. Yeah. They're up, like you say, they're up there on constantly on lists of like best comics of the last decade or best. And not even just like best comics. image comics, just across yeah, the board. Just, just overall. Yeah. And I, I th it's just nice that the way everything's kind of um, lined up for us to talk about these, it, it's just, it, it's just really, 
It's just really timed. Yeah, really, basically. I think it, it's quite funny because I, I, I'm not sure how well it would do as a film or a TV show. I think people would really struggle. There's certain things in comics that, like for instance, you talk about the, the like the big two. Talk about X Men. Yellow and blue span, not white. Yeah, yellow and blue spandex. Can you really imagine that working? Well, I can now. But once upon a time, well, maybe not. Yeah, yeah like the yeah, like yeah. the original X Men films when they were wearing all black leather, it was like, yeah, I think I think for this, it it, it makes it it does make sense, and I'm not quite sure whether or not people could buy into the 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 narrative of a of a robot prince, prince is he called Prince Four? Yeah, uh, something like that. Yeah, it's uh, like his name and succession. Isn't I it? V- yeah one V, which kind of if you squint makes it look like TV. Maybe I'm just reading into it too much, and he's got a telly for head. Like, how, you know, is the is the the average person going to be able to buy into, you know, yeah. empathising with a dude who's got a telly for an head? But do you know what? I think now definitely because the past few years with 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 the the size of 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 the MCU and how how big comic book films are now, I think if if there's ever a time, yeah, that's going to be a thing. That this is it. Have you got to the bit in it where they get a rocket? Yes, so uh, let's just. This is a minor spoiler. Yeah, it's it's a it's not necessarily a massive plot point, but it. I just think it's really. I think it's really yeah. cool and kind of. It's something that happens, or a law. The part of the law of this universe which really sets it apart from from the big two. Yeah, exactly. So so, so we get to the point where our, our lead characters have to get off planet from from where they are at that moment, and they need a rocket ship. Which keep they keep talking about? We need to get to this rocket ship. There's a there's a forest of, of rockets or forest of rocket ships or something like that. It's called, uh, and they get there and it's literally a tree. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it's about sacrificing something to gain entry to the ship. And then yeah. once you're on there, you almost again they never make it fully clear, but it's almost it becomes a telepathic connection. Once yeah. once this once this tree knows it can trust you, it will just go. And it, you also don't program a destination. It will just go where it goes with the wind or whatever. Yeah. But you can then influence it to go where you want it to go. And it, yeah. so the stronger the stronger the relationship, the more it's going to actually it's going to want to go where you go because. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. and I so I, yeah, I, I thought it was really cool. I mean, the thing is with the universe that they live in, like that's not the only spaceships they have. Like there's there's yeah. massive like technological side of it, so it's not like all the spaceships are grown, and it's not like it's it grows metal. It it's a wooden, it's literally a wooden yeah. spaceship. Well, they talk about in there that it's an advantage because, and it even this this pays off at a, at a point. Again, it's it's a minor spoiler, but it doesn't detract from the story. They talk about how well, it's actually better because so much space travel is such modern technology. You won't, we won't get picked up on scanners. Nothing yeah. will be able to undetectable. Be able to detect us. And there's yeah. only at one point when a character physically sees the ship that he's like, Have they been there? there. Yeah. <laughs> How long have they been there? Yeah. Yeah. It's really good. Yeah. Um, I, I don't want to say too much more about it. Cause again, it's one of those where it's, you know, you, you learn more as you go. And I think what you said's interesting is some of it is sometimes it does signpost the story a little bit and it does give really straightforward narration from the character from the baby when she's grown up but i think that adds to it because oh, it makes yeah. it a really compelling and very accessible story with a really rich world around it she gets to be quite poetic in the way that she talks about it and yeah. because she's retrospectively talking about it rather than being in the moment you get these really nice prose that she writes but it doesn't feel weird because it's not a character in the moment saying it yeah she yeah. almost can freeze a moment in the in the height of the drama, whether it's you know a physical assault or it's an emotionally charged particular section, and because she's narrating it, she literally can pause it almost and go, "Oh yeah, they might have said this, but they'll grow to regret it because of this, this, and this." And as a reader, you sat there going, "Oh, wow." Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I luckily I I'm at a point now where I, it happens with every single comic book I read where I get this certain percentage of the way through it and I start slowing down how much I read, especially if I love it because I know it's coming to an end and and I get that almost, not buyer's remorse, but kind of like anxious that I, it's like, oh no, it's, yeah. this thing I really like is coming, coming to an end. So I have slowed down over the last couple of, uh, that's probably about the last 
three, four days on how much of what I read it, but I just read this this part and the last three pages of the of the issue is just all black pages. Yeah. And I turned every single one of them over and it, it goes with the story. But I was heart heart wrenched because of this incident that happens and it's not yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's not like um it's not a big battle that goes wrong or anything like that. It's 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 similar to what we said about the end of Mandalorian season two. It, that moment that really got me in, in Saga was take the two races away, take it being in space or, or magic or anything like that. It was just an emotive, like an emotional um, back and forth between two characters dealing with something that, could, you know, anyone, any one of us could be dealing with. Um, and it just re- it really got me. And I put the comic down. I was like, right, I need to go and do something fun. <laughs> that was, yeah. that was not, not nice. <laughs> Yeah, um, the only thing I've got really left to say about it is that it's not been definitively finished yeah. or anything. And I think for right now, that's exactly what I want. I don't necessarily need to be told it's finished, but I also don't need to be told it's definitely carrying on. That ambiguity is quite quite exciting. Going back to what we said yeah. at the beginning of the episode, actually, you know, with your you know your, your, your big two, they're always going to come back. Yeah. So it's nice having that sort of that that limbo of 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 saga but yeah i mean having read it now on um, the bulk of it i think for me it's just it's so it, yes of course it would be in your top list why why yeah. not but un- unlike you i did have to i did have to read a couple of issues within the compendium to really sort of get with the not to buy into it but to just get with the the groove and how it's how it's written yeah. and, and how it's gonna be going forward and it's almost like a small education into this particular yeah it has a rhythm yeah it has a certain feel to it yeah i definitely agree i hope you enjoyed part one of our comic book episode where we looked at my pick saga come back for part two where we look at lewis's pick east of west and remember guys pay no attention to the man behind the curtain Howdy, and a big thank you to everybody who has watched or listened. If you enjoy our podcast, please hit follow, like, and subscribe, whatever platform you're on. Rate us and review us, turn on notifications for our next episode, and you'll be really helping us to grow and keep building a great community. You can get in touch with us on all the socials via at drhpod, or for us individually, it's Lewis Alex Ryan and underscore Charlie Fallows. Shut up and get your mic out. This is raw.